Hey everyone, we are on the phone with Tom from Foreigner. Hello. Hey, Shauna. Hi. So you are currently on tour and coming to Bethel tomorrow to Woodstock. I'm sure you are excited. Yes. It's uh, it's always fun playing outside in the summer and being on the tour with Kid Rock. It's it's definitely an exciting time. Yeah, he's an amazing performer. I've seen him a few times at Bethel. And uh, he just mm-hmm. puts on a one-of-a-kind show. Yeah, it's incredible. He's like this generation's Elvis or something. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell him I said that. No, no I never. Don't think he's I don't think he's mine. That's a compliment to that, anyone. That is, that is. So um, what made you want to tour with Kid Ra? I think it was one of those things with a combination. Uh, our, our leader and founder, Mick Jones, uh, was thinking, who can we tour with that we haven't toured with before? Because we have toured with everyone you can imagine, from Journey and Styx, Ario and Cheap Trick. Uh, Just year after year, it seems like we're always touring with uh, the same five or six bands. So I think we're looking for someone that we hadn't toured with, which is Kid Rock. And also there's a connection between uh, record companies uh, for always being on Atlantic Records, and I think Kid Rock is also with Atlantic Records. So those were the two main elements, and that was enough to make us just say, yeah, we're both rock bands, let's go for it. Yeah, absolutely. Now, speaking of touring, you have previously, before joining um, Foreigner, you had toured and were part of Aerosmith. Yeah, yeah, that was a, a wonderful learning experience. I went all around the world two times with those guys, uh, just playing keyboards and singing and playing sax. It was <laughs> indescribable uh, would be the word that comes to mind. Yeah. But uh, Corner's better for me because I get to play guitar, and I always wanted to just rock out on guitar. So play those massive songs like Double Vision or Hot Blood or Jukebox Heroes, just mm-hmm. big power chords. That's what I always wanted to do. So I feel really, really fortunate uh, to find a home in, in Foreigner where I can do that and play the sax and go crazy. Yeah, absolutely. Now, speaking of touring, what is your favorite place to tour to that you've been to? Oh, gosh. I, You know, we've been around the world so many times. <laughs> it's hard to pick a favorite place. I, I, I don't think I could pick one, but... Uh, we're just happy if there's any any situation where there's a, a good crowd and they want to rock out and connect with the band and we get that energy going back and forth. It doesn't really matter where it is, you know, as long as the audience is into it and we're having a, a good night. Uh, it's, it's a real thrill to play this kind of music. There's a lot of energy in rock music. I think that's a huge reason why I'm a rock musician. I love that energy. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm such a rock fan, you know. And, uh, <laughs> Good choice. Yes, and I love going or, to concerts. Yeah, and sometimes the music chooses us. You know, it's mm-hmm. not like you set out to look for something. You just know when something hits you in the right way. And for me, that's always been rock music. It sounds like it is for you, too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Other people love classical, jazz, whatever, but it's just what resonates. Like, yep, <laughs> this is the one for me. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm totally a rock person. Right on. Yeah. So, um, in your opinion, music has changed, you know, over the years. And how would you explain, in your opinion, how has music changed from the time that you've started till now? Yeah, music is is, is always changing. And uh, they say it goes around in circles, but I don't really believe that. Uh, (laughs) I just, I like the way it changes and continues to evolve. You know, and obviously there's there's electronic music now that you can do so much stuff with. You can create these sonic landscapes that sound like they're from another planet, you know. And I think a lot of people listen to that uh, because in my generation, Pink Floyd was the only one doing it, you know, or, or Genesis or, you know, Yes, or the bands like that that had the equipment, <laughs> the synthesizers. Yeah. Nobody else had them. But now, of course, everyone has them in their laptop and probably on their cell phone, too, by now, or definitely in an iPad. Uh, you can create all of those kinds of otherworldly sounds. So that opens up a lot of avenues right there. But as far as rock music goes, I think there's still a lot of great rock music being made. Uh, 
people have their choice to listen to any style of music, and a lot of people gravitate towards this kind of rock music. So there's all sorts out there, and, and people like different kinds of music for different reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the popular music is very driven by the dance element, and I've always liked that. I like dance music. You know, I, I mean, I like the Bee Gees and stuff. <laughs> oh, my God, I love the afraid, Bee Gees. I'm not afraid to say it. Me neither. <laughs> Everybody loves the PGs. What's yes. not to like? So stuff that makes you move, you know, stuff that has a really good groove, like the old Michael Jackson stuff, anything like that that's dance oriented. I love it. I freak out for Rick James. I freak. I'll get up and start dancing, you know. So mm-hmm. I love that kind of stuff that's driven by the rhythm. So I don't, I don't have any problem with the modern music that's so beat driven. I get it. <laughs> it's like yeah. let's dance because I'd rather not watch TV. <laughs> you know, there's nothing on. Exactly. <laughs> it's really bad. So that that kind of mindset has been around for a long time. Mm-hmm. It goes all the way back to uh, Rock Around the Clock, you know, in the 50s, and you know the 60s. Everyone knows that one. But 70s, it was disco, right? And it was like, you know, forget the world, let's just disco out. And then the 80s was new wave and punk and stuff. Uh, I had a, remember there was a T-shirt that said, F art, let's dance. I don't. The F stands for you know what. Yes. And then, and then it's art. Let's dance. So oh, forget okay. art. Let's dance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a kind of a mentality in the eighties. Mm-hmm. I I do recall. <laughs> so nowadays, I think it's a similar situation. I just thump thump thump, you know, in the club, and I get it. I got yeah. no problem with that. <laughs> right. It's fun. Would you Lose ever? I want to be a robot too, because a robot has no brain. <laughs> Would you ever consider working with um, somebody from maybe um, this era of music? You know, like maybe Lady Gaga, let's say, or uh-huh. I, I don't know. That's a that's a, a great idea. I'm not sure how Mick feels about it. Uh, Mick Jones, Foreigner is his entity, you know, it's his vision. And I don't, for some reason, I don't think he's done a lot of, working with outside uh, artists, uh, it's, it's a strange situation, because if you look at the former catalog, there is zero instances of them doing anyone else's song. Mm-hmm. So I think Mick feels that he has such a huge catalog, which I agree, it is a massive catalog of hit songs. Uh, we have a tough enough time playing them as it is. We have to leave some out, right. just because there's not enough time. So that may be a situation where, for now, we have so many great songs, we need to just try and play them. Right, but, exactly. Uh, I, yeah, I'm sure he's open-minded. I, you know, he did work with Ozzy Osbourne, and he's worked with Sammy Hagar and Van Halen. He produced an album for Billy Joel. So I, I don't mean to sound like he's in, in any way ex- exclusive. Uh, so that shows you right there that he definitely is open-minded. He did Absolutely. A song, that great song with Ozzy Osbourne called Dreamer. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, yeah, I think anything's possible. And I know he loves modern current stuff. So uh, I'll have to pitch that idea to him. I'm glad you brought it up. Yeah. Tell him that it's a great idea from Sean O'May. Okay. Yeah. And then when you come to the meet and greet, you can tell him yourself. I will. I will tell him tomorrow about that. It's a good idea, I think. Now, what is your favorite song um, from all your Foreigner albums? We recently did one in Atlantic City, uh, the best of Foreigner 4 and more. And within that album, I think uh, there's a version of Urgent that is just one of my favorites. There's some also, uh, also some great acoustic stuff on there. We've had a lot of fun with this acoustic stuff, you know. Uh, we did a version of Cold as Ice that has saxophone on it. So it will be one of those ones where I, I get to just lose my mind on the saxophone. Mm-hmm. And will I get to see that tomorrow? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll definitely be go, going crazy during Urgent. That's just what I do. Awesome. I can't wait. I'm so excited. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Tom, for calling in today. All right, Shona May. And, uh, Absolute pleasure talking with you. Yes, thank you so much, and I'm excited to see you tomorrow and 
meet you guys and hang out for a little while. Yeah, it's going to be a great night. Friday night, rock show. Let's yes. go. Nothing better than a rock show on a Friday night at Woodstock. Ooh, yeah. Oh, that sounds so good. Yes. Looking forward to it. Yes, me too. And I will see you tomorrow. Thank you so much. Okay, Sean. All right, thank you. Talk to you soon. Okay. See you later. All right, bye. Take care.